It's a great player. Yeah. There's typical. no question about that, but you got a problem with this move? I think it's a typical Colt move. I mean, here's a team that needed a franchise quarterback. There were two out there. They have a chance at two. They don't take them. They end up coming back into the picture to get Trent Dilfer. They take an outside linebacker, not even a true outside linebacker. Somebody has to learn coverage in Trev Alberts. They have Coriat, they have Harad. They do have a hole that developed with the release of Dwayne Bickett. But to pass up a Trent Dilfer when all you have is Jim Harbaugh, give me a break. That's why the Colts are picking second every year in the draft, not battling for the Super Bowl like other clubs in the National Football League. Who in the hell is Mel Kiper? My neighbor has more credentials than Mel Kiper, and my neighbor is a post. What do you want to cover first, our players or uh, that, that or that jerk in uh, Baltimore? Well, let me tell you a little bit. I mean, the people in this room. Mel Kiper lives in Baltimore, and I found all this out about the last three days. He lives in Baltimore. He tried to uh, hang around the practices up there, I think, when Teddy was a coach earlier. And this didn't come from Teddy. This came from another guy. But he always wanted to work in the NFL. He has no credentials to work in the NFL. He always just hung around. Nobody ever hired him. He's never been hired by anyone. When the Colts moved here, he was very, very upset. So every chance that Mel Kuyper gets to shoot at the Colts in Indianapolis, he's going to do it. I happen to have three minutes to take a shot back at him. What I said there... Probably 300 personnel people in the league would like to have said it. But as I walked down the, the hallway there, Tom Donahoe called me and said that I w won the ringing endorsement of the whole Steeler organization. Thank you for saying it. That was Tom Donahoe. He reaches out to everyone. I got a sister in Burlington Junction, Missouri, that when we took William Perry back in 84 or 85, I talked to her two days later and she said, why'd you take the fat kid? And I said, you just have to believe me, he was, he was the best available. And he was the best available. But, I mean, Mel Kuyper gets to your sister. He gets to your mother. He gets to everybody. I just read, somebody wrote the article about the receiver down here at Indiana. Came out three years ago. Was supposed to be in the third or fourth round by Mel Kuyper. He never was drafted. Wasn't even signed as a free agent. He hurt that kid. But there's others he's hurt. Listen to him trash people. This guy can't do this. This guy's dumb. This guy can't do that. And unfortunately, some of the college coaches out there think that Mel Kuyper is part of the National Football League inner circle. And he isn't. Mark Carrier, when we brought him into town that, that year, I had a TV show with him at 1030 that night. We sat down there prepping for the show before, uh, before it happened. And he said, you know, uh, Mr. Tobin, I thought I was a pretty darn good football player until I got to Chicago. And we flew him in that day. And all I hear is a criticism. And it all came from ESPN Mel Kuyper. And so the kid had to dig him out of a grave, himself out of the grave, before he could be recognized as a great player, which he was at Southern Cal, and which he is, is with the Bears. And we will win, regardless of what Mel Kuyper says. Bill Tobin said that uh, Mel Kuyper doesn't know what he's talking about, but he liked your pick. Now, who do you side with, Bill Tobin or Mel Kuyper on this one? Well, I've got to go with Kuyper. His, his track record's better than Tobin's. <laughs>